Bob Pollock from the Extension Service joins us each Friday at this time. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. If you have a question for Bob, you can give him a call at 479-1160 or 349-WCCS. That's 349-9227. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. I don't, Man, it's back on my desk, back in my office, but I, I wanted to show you the... Uh, Old Farmer's Almanac Garden Guide that was sent to me earlier this week. It's chock full of all kinds of things. And one of the things uh, that is, there's a whole section on uh, grasses, wild grasses, and and ornamental grasses in particular for planting in your yard. And I found it interesting, the wide variety. Um, and, And I thought to myself, gosh, there are a lot of them. I wonder if they all grow here. So we think of fruit trees and and zones uh, and the zone in which Pennsylvania finds itself. And if you follow the zone guide on the fruit trees, you see that there are certain ones that are not recommended for here, uh, but maybe for further south. Does it work that way with the ornamental grasses yeah. too? Yes, it, it will work that same way. Mm-hmm. And and it's the same way for all ornamental shrubs, trees, perennials, annuals. Um, they all have zones that they grow in best. So usually we call those hardiness, you know, the plants hardy to a certain temperature range, mm-hmm. um, both minimum and maximum. So they'll, and they've developed those hardiness zone maps that are usually in color. <laughs> it's easiest to read them when they're in color. Is it the same map for and grasses as it is for other? Same map, yeah, okay. same map. Yep, so if it's a... If it's a plant that grows in zone six, uh, which is our zone here, mm-hmm. it used to be five. They adjusted those a little bit. And so now we, six used to be warmer and a little farther east. And now we're included in that six. Um, and we used to be in five. Uh, but that, that if those plants are listed as hardy to zone six um, or below, five, mm-hmm. four, three, two, then they'll do okay here, or should in most cases do okay here. We okay. always have those little unique pockets with all our hills and valleys and ups and downs, um, elevation sure. changes yeah. that that can influence that a little bit. I tend to still want to pick plants that are at least hardy to zone five. You want to go to five. You, yeah. You, you, I just six don't is a little riskier. Huh? Because we still get those fluctuations that happen. We still get a lot of May freezes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's more so the those coldest temperatures that we might get during the winter months, um, not just that, you know, that freeze that happens when we start to warm up, but mm-hmm. but those kind of temperatures that we can get to during those winter months um, that those plants are subjected to that we just just it's a hedge. You know, it's a yeah. Uh, just a little bit. If you want to be ri- more risky, <laughs> you're gonna try yeah. to you're gonna try some of those six and even seven, zone seven plants. Just uh-huh. to and and occasionally that happens, or sometimes things plants are maybe not quite labeled exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be a zone this way or that way. A little hybrid. Yeah, and you're not, you know, so you try it out. Um, so we're six ish, yes, as opposed yeah. to solidly six. And, and really, probably as you go farther south in the county from Indiana, you know, mm-hmm. you get down into Blairsville and that area, they can maybe get away with that a little easier than than somebody up in the northern part of the county can, uh, because that's just enough of a a change um, going north. Yeah, uh, that would that, be me. Yeah, that yeah. would be you. You know, there's some plants that some folks in Blairsville might get away with that you might get away with uh, three out of five years or maybe four out of five years. And then that fifth year, though, it gets nailed. But elevations are a part of this mix as well, right? It is. Yeah. 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 By the way, you're hearing sirens that there's an accident on Route 422 in Shalakta Borough and Indiana fire crews are rushing there. Elderton is already there and Indiana is on the way. So... Uh, motor vehicle collision there. Citizens Ambulance also dispatched. You'll hear the sirens and 
Please do be aware, and you probably want to avoid 422. That traffic can be very heavy there anyway, so now it's going to be tied up a little bit. Okay? All righty. So um, the grass thing, uh, a, a grass that will freeze out in the extra cold weather here, uh, is it more likely to come back than, say, a fruit tree would? Uh, in other words, is, is are grasses less sensitive to cold than, than some of the more tropical or, or warmer weather trees? Well, those grasses, in most cases, are going to be, they tend to act more like a herbaceous perennial, meaning the top dies back during the winter. Mm -hmm. So the root system remains alive, but the top turns brown and dies. Yeah. And then we get regrowth from the, the crown of that plant. Mm -hmm. Is typically how those grasses grow uh, versus our woody apple tree, um, or other fruit tree that's a, a woody plant and they're all deciduous. They're going to lose their leaves in the fall. Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit different. That that wood is not dying mm -hmm. unless we, you know, get into <laughs> the really cold yeah. cold conditions that, that cause some tips to die back. Um, or something else happens, something to the root system or something that causes that whole plant to die or a big portion of it. Uh, so that so they are a little bit different in their structure and and uh, how they handle yeah. those conditions. But yeah. yeah, most of the grasses are going to die back. Um, you're, then you're going to either naturally that stuff will snap off those stems, or you're going to cut it off. Um, and you're right. There's a there's a lot of different ones to pick from, all different sizes, uh, different some different ornamental characteristics. So some of the colorations that you can Get mm -hmm. so some have a lot of winter interest. Some just turn brown, um, yeah. and are kind of hanging out over winter. Well, and, so, I, and some have more. The seed heads are more prolific, or, or or have more ornamental characteristics to them, or just you know bigger, uh, sway in the wind a little bit more. Yeah. Well, for the winter this year, again, we put in some ornamental grass down through the yard. Uh, down by the burn barrel, if you will, in front of the burn barrel screen. Uh, and I did not cut it off in the fall. You told me I could either cut it off in the spring or the fall. It doesn't really matter. So I let it grow. And I was uh, talking with my Amish neighbor the other day. Uh, and, and, and I said, you know what? This grass, this grass down here in my yard, it looks just like your beard. Uh, it, the way that it's <laughs> swaying, swaying in the wind like that. <laughs> Uh, and, and Mo's got a big, a big laugh out of that. But uh, uh, it, you know, you're you're right about the ornamental grasses. Uh, they have all kinds of different characters, including grasses that will be green through the season and in the fall, like the leaves on a tree, they'll turn red. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So they'll get some fall coloration to them. Yeah. And uh, and then some will only get you know a foot high, two foot high, mm -hmm. and others will get eight or ten feet. So there's a lot, and then the texture. Of the plant you know a lot of times when we're using plants for in the landscape and ornamental purposes uh, we're we're looking at the size and the shape and the colors um, and as well as the texture of the plant so we have coarse textured and medium textured and fine textured plants mm -hmm. uh, and those all have their place in in the garden in the landscape uh, you're just trying to to match that up some of the coarse textured things you know, they they have bigger leaves. They have bigger stems. Yeah, um, they look a little bit rougher, uh, as opposed to something that's smaller and and has much smaller seed heads, mm -hmm. um, smaller leaves. We had an invasive uh, grass added to the list this week, didn't we? In we, Pennsylvania, we might have. I've been focusing on tree fruit this week, and so I might have missed that. <laughs> 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 yeah, we did, I, and I was just looking to see if I could find the headline on that to find out which one it was, but it's it's a common one uh, that we're able to get at nurseries now, but after a while we're not going to be able to. So, um, you know, those those sorts of things are, are always interesting to watch uh, when you consider what the definition is of invasive and something yeah. that has been ornamental and a, a staple for uh, a lot of folks in their yards, we realize all of a sudden uh, it can actually be harmful to our native plants and, and the culture around here. Yeah, and they, and they tend to be plants that are more aggressive or they have more ways that they can spread. Um, there's probably, it might be a miscanthus cultivar. 
because they tend to be a bigger plant. I know occasionally driving, just driving down the road, all of a sudden you'll come behind the guardrails on the road on the bank. Uh -huh. um, there'll be this patch of grass growing there. And it was ornamental grass that was in somebody's yard at one time mm -hmm. um, and made a border. Or, and uh, it, the seeds matured and blew away or the birds got them and moved them around. Burning bush. Oh, oh, oh that's, Yeah. So that's not a grass. It's noxious weeds list. Yeah. Pennsylvania's yeah. noxious weeds list. Uh, burning bush shrubs. So that's a that's a euonymus. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, that's been planted as an ornamental shrub. So it's a woody plant. It's a shrub. Um, deciduous, loses its leaves in the fall. Uh, but it does get berries. And yeah. yes, that was that is on the list. Um, the Japanese barberry was added recently, yes. uh, and the uh, several varieties of calorie pear tree. Yes. So those are all part of the uh, invasive list. Those are, yes. So those are being phased in and will be banned. Um, I believe it's within a two-year period. Uh, so there, you can, you can still buy some of that stuff in the trade, um, but but there's a a date at which time, I think it's next year, um, that no one will be allowed, permitted to sell those. Yeah. And so it'll be illegal to sell those plants. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not going to make people rogue them out of their landscape. Um, so anything that's there is there. But and you won't be able to buy them and bring them in to, either. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. there you go. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. <laughs> this has been an exciting. See, you've got to go. It's in the edit in the morning. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Oh, talking bad weeds. I know a few of those. Hi, moms and dads. Let me give it to you straight. We kids wait all year until we hear the last bell of the school year for summer vacation. And then we spend three months trying to find ways to have the most exciting summer ever, but usually end up bored. That all changed for me when Mom and Dad signed me up for the YMCA of Indiana County's Day Camp. At the Y Summer Camp, 